Hello Polygoners! I am Shaft, you are watching Polygon Gaming, and we've got a phenomenal match for you guys today, because here on the bottom right hand side of Odyssey Ladder Edition, playing for Team Sidestorm Gaming, in the red, Terran Chunks, it's Gumiho! I love this guy, he was so fun to interview after um, one of our Polygon Invitationals, just a full of personality, really great guy to work with. And here on the top left hand side, playing on a barcode account, in the blue Zerg Chunks, she is none other than Queen of Blades, Scarlet! Now Scarlet has opened up with a gas and a pull, but these are late, I wonder why. Huh, there's a proxy hatchery right in the middle of Odyssey Ladder. Huh, now this is a funny map. In particular, this area right here, very easy to assault for Zerg in the mid game, but this is going to speed it up quite a bit. Now this is probably going to be a Roach build if I had to guess, but what I want to talk about is just how much Scarlet has changed over the last little bit. Ooh, totally forgot the music there. Alright, hopefully that fixes that. Anyways, she's changed quite a bit. Ever since showing up in Korea, she's gotten more and more aggressive, as is typical of the Korean ladder. But more so, she's been playing with no regret quite a bit. And there's actually a meme that I saw on Twitter earlier today that kind of talked about uh, standard macro and its relationship to uh, <laughs> to uh, no regret. But... um. I'll, I'll post that up if I can find it again. Anyways, uh, he's a very aggressive player. He plays things very bizarre, and I feel like that's rubbing off on Scarlet quite a bit. If you've noticed, we've actually been casting her um, quite a bit on this channel lately, and it's just because she's so fascinating. She is a very unique individual in every way, and I have the utmost respect for her. But anyways, Gumiho scouted with this Reaper, saw that, uh, yeah, this is not an expansion, didn't even bother going up in here. He's trying to get home because he knows something's weirds up, and he's kind of scouting around for the proxy, so I think he knows that. Anyways, these Lings are doing a little bit of work. I think they might have got a kill on one SCV. Yes, they did, and a Marine as well, but, uh, this command center will finish now this is uh, actually fairly typical of like railgans uh three roach opener uh just send out two lings to harass this command center but in this variation we've got the roaches coming in augmented by this creep and even more importantly has the benefit of the queen which can uh you know is going to get kited of course by the reaper but does great work against bunkers and any kind of mech which is going to be coming out right now the uh, cyclone oh i love how she's um healing the or well turning the weakened roaches into ravagers in order to uh to give them a huge armor boost and it makes it so that the cyclone has to retarget did kill off one of the morphing ravagers but one did complete did f that one just died at this point in any case these roaches doing a lot of work and this is kind of a uh, a crazy position we've had some of the scvs being killed and uh looks like this attack might get held some great repairs here by gumiho but uh, this is this is definitely changing everything Gumiho wanted to do because this cyclone opener typically is followed up with Hellions or you know some straight into mech type thing. Whereas uh, you know this is a pretty delayed starport and only just now getting the tech lab, which you know Gumiho is a very massive Banshee and Raven player, so this is going to hurt his style just a little bit. So he's trying to hold on with just the two cyclones. There's not really that much the Marines can do without. Impact. He does have the reactor there though, just just to see what he can do. Now the cyclone taking a little bit of damage. You're gonna have to move back. This exposes the SCV line, and the roaches and the ravagers gonna be uh, taking those out. And wants to bruise this command center a little bit, but knows they can't take it out. So retreating back to the creep. Of course, the queen is uh, spreading the creep all the way from here, and this is that segment of the map we were talking about. In fact, in pigs. Uh, one of Pig's newest videos, I think it came out today, he was talking about this map in particular. I will link to that in the description if you guys want to see uh, him talking about this particular segment of the map. It's a pretty interesting study. Actually, I'll see if he'll give me permission to throw that on the back of this video. If you don't see it on the back of this video, check the description. Alright, so we got the Banshee going to be popping out. This is going to hurt uh, Scarlet's attack, but she does have the two queens here. There is nothing to detect the cloak, though. It's got about... 25 seconds or so left on it. Uh, of course, Roaches and Ravagers can break this front, but they have to do it before Cloak finishes, else this is probably going to be a 
a bad situation here for Gumio. Now, Scarlet going to be rushing right into, oh, and back down that choke point. Very careful not to get caught in that just yet. Only running forward when the Corruptors have the ability to cast a spell. And at this point, actually going to be rushing the choke point as well. And you see, she's bleeding quite a bit of the, uh, the Ravagers, but she's got a few left over. The Queen's going to be coming into support with the Banshee. Uh, very, very weak. It does have the ability to cloak, though, and plenty of energy on it. About a third of its total available energy. It looks like the Starport will be taken down and the SV is going to be trying to repair this Banshee, but the Banshee does fall, and that is going to be a good game from Gumio, resting all his hopes on that Banshee. I am actually very, very surprised to see that he did not choose to cloak, despite having all that energy to do so. Guys, I am Shaft of Polygon Gaming. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. I would love to get some more subscribers in here. If each person who watches this could just go find one friend to subscribe to the channel, watch some of the videos, watch our educational content, it would do so much to support the channel. But there are other ways to support the channel. You can leave a comment in the description below or... If you're feeling very generous, you can go to our Patreon. Donating even just $1 a month makes all the difference. You don't even know. But until next time, guys, Chatelet, my dudes. Odyssey, we see a much bigger spread on these bases. These bases, once you go to three, you've already got this kind of area there and there. Uh, if you go to four, you either take this gold, which is super exposed, or you take this this fourth step base down here, and there's a huge arc where units can come in from. Uh, not to mention these massive wide areas in front of the natural, which are also very dangerous areas where Hydra Baneland can come in. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.